Favorite children's toy is the atomic energy set with real uranium. Yeah, I don't think they do this anymore. It is a cool bit, though. I've, I've heard about this. Basically, a physicist thought that since they lived in the atomic age, it would be good to get kids educated on the basics of nuclear physics. So they made a toy set called the Atomic Energy Lab that has actual radioactive materials that release alpha, beta, and gamma rays. And you have like a Geiger counter and it's a whole thing. Probably not the best thing to put out there. It was safe as long as you didn't break the glass, exactly. Was that guy sued into oblivion? I don't think so. I don't know if there was any damage done, but this would not be legal today at all, I don't think. You guys ever hear that story of the radioactive material of that radioactive, I think it was in Brazil or something, but it was basically there was a decommissioned hospital and the hospital had a machine that did like, I think x-rays or some kind of analysis. And in that machine, there was radioactive material. They went in there to strip the walls of copper wire. You know, they were like scavengers. Like the hospital was defunct. They strip it out. They got some of the radioactive material, not knowing what it was. They had it in a plastic baggie. Something like 18 people died in like a death trail that tracked how they moved across the city after getting that radioactive material. Cessia 137 in Galania. Yeah, whoo. They only, they only figured out what was happening after the wife of somebody who got cancer brought the plastic baggie of the dust to the police and said, everyone around me is dying. What is happening? And the police looked at it and the police who are not nuclear physicists were like, eh? And then they called up the um, National Nuclear like Investigation Department or whatever. And the, the people with actual knowledge on the subject were like, what, 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 shut down, shut the city down, shut, what? And sent like a, a military platoon over there to recover the material. And, it, and they killed a bunch of people, like a f fuck ton of people. Absolute like terror shit, like real life horror. Yeah. The Goiania incident was a radioactive contamination accident in 1987 in Brazil after a forgotten radiotherapy source was stolen from an abandoned hospital in the city. It was subsequently handled by many people, resulting in four... Oh, only four deaths, sorry. About 112,000 people were examined for radioactive contamination. 249 were found to have been contaminated. The International Atomic Energy Agency called it one of the world's worst radiological incidents. A small capsule containing about three ounces of highly radioactive casium chloride encased in a shielding made of lead and steel. The hospital was abandoned. The guard protecting the site did not show up for work. Taking advantage of the absence of the guard, Roberto de Santos Alves and Wagner Mote Pereira illegally entered. They disassembled the teletherapy unit for scrap. They began dismantling the experiment. That same evening, they both began to vomit due to radiation sickness. Nevertheless, they continued in their efforts. I don't necessarily blame them because like, how given like assuming these are just lower class guys how could they possibly have thought like oh yeah i'm scrapping this building this dust just kills everything like i, I can't blame that is like a very i i just do not think the average person would even think it's it literally like it's a curse it's literally like a magical curse like oh yeah this rock just kills everyone around it magically silently with no indication that it's happened like okay cool great it's a curse the following day diarrhea and dizziness their left hand began to swell he developed a burn on his hand in the same sh size and shape as the aperture he eventually underwent partial amputation of several fingers on september 15th where his symptoms were diagnosed as the result of something he had eaten Alves continued with his efforts to dismantle the equipment and eventually freed the casium capsule from its protective rotating head. His prolonged exposure to the radioactive material led to his right forearm becoming ulcerated, requiring amputation. They opened the capsule with a screwdriver, allowing him to see the blue light. It was producing light. Holy sh! It was so radioactive that it was in the visible light spectrum. Oh my god. Coming from the tiny opening he created, he inserted the screwdriver and successfully scooped out some of the- Okay, at this point, I feel like he should have been concerned. 
some of the glowing substance, thinking it was perhaps a type of gunpowder. He tried to light it, but the powder would not ignite. The exact mechanism of the light was generated was not known at the time the IAEA report was written. It's thought to be either ionized airflow or some other magical shit. Radiation associated with him. He sold the items to a nearby scrapyard. That night, Diver Aves Ferreira, the owner of the scrapyard, noticed the blue glow from the punctured capsule. Thinking the capsule's contents were valuable or even supernatural, he immediately brought it into the house. Over the next three days, he invited friends and family to view the glowing, strange substance. On September 21st at the scrapyard, one of Fira's friends succeeded in freeing several rice-sized gra rice grains of the growing mater glowing material from the capsule using a screwdriver. He touched it with his bare hands. Fira began to share some of them with various friends and family members. That same day, his wife, 37 Maria, began to fall ill. On September 25th, Ver sold the scrap metal to a third scrapyard. The day before the sale to the third scrapyard, um, Diver's brother successfully scrapped some additional dust out of the source and took it to his house a short distance away. He spread it out on a concrete floor. His six-year-old daughter, Lida Neve, uh, das Neves Ferreira, later ate an egg while sitting on this floor. She was also fascinated by the blue glow of the powder, applying it to her body and showing it off to her mother. Dust from the powder fell onto the egg she was consuming. She eventually absorbed one giga becquerel and received a total dose of six gray. Sure, more than a fatal dose, even with treatment. Yeah, it... This stuff was radioactive enough that a single moat of powder, a single like grain of it, is is beyond the help of medical science. It's beyond anything that terrified to, ha to ask what happened to the kid. They died quickly. If you ingesting any of this is basically like the best thing the hospital can do is shoot you. Not e yeah, literally like you do not want to die from radioactive poisoning. The, the, literally the most like not even a joke. The most ethical thing a doctor can say is, we can euthanize them. That's the best we can do. Otherwise, your daughter will burn from the inside out. The DNA will melt. L like, literally. Maria, the wife, was the first to notice many people around her falling severely ill at the same time. On September 28th, 15 days after the item was found, she reclaimed the materials and, from the rival scrapyard, transported them to the hospital. So this, this girl actually went to a rival scrapyard, I think, and, like, took the material, which is pretty based of her. She figured it out. On the morning of September 29th, a visiting medical physicist used a scintillation counter to confirm the presence of radioactivity and persuaded the authorities to take immediate action. The city, state, and national governments were all aware of the incident by the end of the day. News of the radiation exposure was broadcast on local, national, and international media. Within days, nearly 130,000 people in Guyana flooded local hospitals, concerned they might have been exposed. The four fatalities were an employee of Diver Ferreira, the daughter. Jesus. When an international team arrived to treat her, she was, confirmed she was discovered confined to an isolated room in the hospital because the staff were afraid to go near her. She gradually experienced swelling in her upper body, hair loss, kidney and lung damage, and internal bleeding. She died on the 23rd of October from septicemia and generalized infection at the hospital, buried in a common cemetery. Literally, she was buried in a lead-lined coffin. Despite these measures, news of her impending burial caused a riot of more than 2,000 people in the cemetery on the day of her burial, all fearing her corpse would poison the land. Rioters tried to prevent her burial by using stones and bricks to block the cemetery roadway. She was buried despite this interference. Maria, the woman who actually brought attention to the incident, also died. Became sick about three days after, condition worsened, hair loss, internal bleeding. Died about a month after exposure. And another employee of De Ver Ferreira, Israel Batista dos Santos, uh, serious respiratory and lymphatic complications. The cool thing about radiation poisoning is that can, it can kill you in basically any way because it causes every part of your body to fail and melt. There's really no, like, one way to die from radiation poisoning. You can just literally, like, it just causes everything to shut down. Uh, it, like, literally anything can, yeah. How the f*** did they just lose track of this irradiated shit? Unironically, the fact that the abandoned hospital 
was allowed to keep its incredibly radioactive material was an un like an unbelievable fucking security failure. Was there a legal? Legal matters. In light of the death's cause, the three doctors who owned and operated the IGR were charged with criminal negligence. Because the accidents occurred before the promulgation of the Federal Constitution of 1988, and because the substance was acquired by the clinic and not individual owners, the court could not declare the owners of the IGR liable. One of the IGR's owners and the clinic physician were ordered to pay 100,000 Brazilian real for the derelict condition of the building. The two thieves were not included as defendants in the public civil suit. In 2000, CNEN was ordered to pay by the 8th Federal Court of Go Goiás compensation of 1.3 real, near three quarters of a million U.S., to guarantee medical and physiological treatment for the direct and indirect victims. Was cleanup. Topsoil had to be removed. This shit was so radioactive that they had to remove the upper layer of soil and demolish several houses. This was, they, they couldn't just like clean the area. They had to literally like scoop entire portions of the earth out and take it away. This is some grimdark shit. Yeah. The, after this, the media was literally reported like, like the, the like, coordinates of the movement of the material through the city. What was the machine they got this radioactive material from? Um, it was a, um, uh, some kind of radiotherapy institute. Um, where, where was it? What? A, C, a cesium-137 based teletherapy unit that had been purchased in 1977. Okay. This. This fucking thing. So what lesson can we learn from this? Ah! You want a lesson? This is an argument against libertarianism. We talk about externalities all the time, but here's an example of something that cannot be managed responsibly without government intervention. We need radiotherapy machines if we want to treat people's cancer. Obviously, that's, that's, it's good to have those. Uh, but without a very strict set of rules for how this equipment is handled, would you trust private corporations for the completely independent and legal responsibility free management and disposal of this stuff? No! If you do, you're insane. You are mentally ill if you think private companies should dictate their own guidelines on the disposal. They'll be dumping this shit in rivers without government oversight, okay? If we're lucky. If we're not lucky, they'll just be dusting it out the second story window. Sorry, a bit more grim. Just, it's, it's a very interesting story. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's very um, sad, but it is interesting, I think. I am plastered and i haven't even started on my second cocktail libertarians will always refer to chernobyl if that stuff is brought up the argument isn't that the government always does a good job the argument is that the government needs to exist for there to even be the possibility of a good job worth noting by the way that while chernobyl was a disaster every functional nuclear apparatus in all of human history has been overseen by government regulation